Welcome back. You're tuned into Bazaar Morning Call. We'll be bracing for a big gap down uh, this morning, but there are plenty of stocks that are going to be on our radar. So let's get straight to our top 10 segment. Reema, you go first. Infosys, the numbers are disappointing, but how much in the price? Well, that's uh, we'll come to know in the next few days. But just to put the numbers on board, Infi ADR was down 2.5%. In the Indian markets, Infi's already lost 4.5% so far this week. And since the Accenture numbers, the stock has corrected 15%. Now, Q4 was a big miss, both on revenues and margins. Revenues have fallen by 2.2%. Margins have contracted by 40 basis points versus expectations of an expansion. Now, what led to the miss? One, discretionary slowdown continues to remain the key focal point. And two, there was a one-time restructuring of a BFSI client, which impacted revenues and margins by 100 basis points. The problem is also the FI25 guidance, the outlook ahead. Uh, and that's been disappointing. 1% to 3% is what the company is guided versus estimates of 3 to 5%. So much lower in terms of FI25 growth forecast. Margin guidance maintained at 20 to 25%. And just to put that 1% to 3% number in context, TCS had reported a 3.4% revenue growth last year, and they are confident that FI25 will be better than FI24. So the street is working with about a 5-6% kind of revenue growth for TCS, while Infi is likely to end between 25 to 3%. Um, just one more question that I want to put out there. Is the Infi guidance conservative? One, we've already seen the stock fall a fair bit. And two, deal wins for the company have been very strong. 80% jump in the deal wins in the last one year in FI24, which will start ramping up. And there is a possibility of a positive surprise just in case discretionary demand comes back. Also on the margin front, while this year they're maintaining the margin guidance, uh, they did talk in their call about margin expansion over the medium term. Um, so just want to put that you know bullish case out there, silver lining, not a bullish case, which some people are talking about. Um, but we'll uh, keep getting you snippets from uh, the management at the press conference. Okay, well, uh, that's a little later uh, in the day, and we'll uh, get you uh, that as we go along. Uh, let's talk about uh, the... Uh, okay, Bajaj Auto is the stock that we're going to talk about. So Darshan is here with details uh, on uh, Bajaj. The management, by the way, joins us a little later uh, on Bajaj. So over to you. Morning. Morning, Prashant. So it's the first auto company to report numbers, and these numbers that have that have been reported are better than estimates. Even year on year, there is a healthy improvement in the numbers. Talking about the Q4 numbers, revenue has increased 34%, and margin has come in nearly 100 bips higher at 20.1%. Even profit has seen a growth of 35% year on year. And margin improvement can be attributed to three reasons. First, dollar realization. Second, operating leverage. And third, favorable product mix on premiumization. In the analyst call talking about the outlook for FY25, company says it expects two-wheeler industry to grow by 7 to 8 percent in FY25 and expects premium segment to outgrow this, which implies market share gains for the company. On two-wheeler electric vehicles, company is looking to ramp up distribution to 600 stores in next six months from the current number of 200. And talking about FY24 numbers, revenue was up 22 percent and profit has increased 32 percent year on year. Thank you very much for that. And we'll have the management joining us today on Bazaar to discuss more about the Q4 performance and the way forward. But moving on to Axis Bank, Abhishek joins in. Why are you watching Axis? Well, uh, the, they have given a press release which states that along with the result, they'll also consider uh, taking a board approval for fundraise. So this will be after a long time that Axis Bank would be raising funds, although uh, it was largely known that they would be uh, looking to raise funds. Uh, bank's tier one ratio and total uh, capital adequacy ratio is at 14.2% and 16.6% respectively as of Q3 FI24. Jefferies has written a note on Axis Bank. They have a buy recommendation, target price of 1000 380 per share. They say that bank uh, would discuss capital risk prospects on 24th April, while management had indicated that there was no immediate plan uh, with CET1 uh, ratio at about 14%. The upcoming investment in Max Life would have consumed about 15 basis points, so this capital raise was in the offing. Uh, if the bank raises about 15% of their net worth, which is around 20 to 25,000 crore rupees, uh, this would mean a 7% equity dilution. Uh, capital adequacy ratio would increase by 160 basis point, while book value will actually increase by 4 to 5 basis point. ROE, however, gets uh, consumed or declines by 100 basis point to around 17%. Back to you. Okay, thanks a lot for that, Abhishek. Well, let's hop across to Vamakshi. She's here to tell us about ICICI Securities. Morning, Vamakshi. 
Well, good morning, Nigel. The company reported a good set of numbers, which is why it will be in focus today. Revenue saw an uptick of almost 17% sequentially, and this growth in revenue is largely being driven by brokerage income, which was up nearly 26% sequentially, and interest income also saw an uptick of almost 15%. EBITDA as well grew by almost 18%, and EBITDA margins have actually improved by 103 basis points sequentially to 69.9%, and the improvement in the EBITDA is largely coming from a drop in the employ benefit expenses of nearly 8% but on the other hand when we look at other expenses they gone up by almost 37% and fees and commission expenses have also risen by almost 36% but despite that we are seeing a very sharp uptick in the revenue the margins has, have improved and as a, as a result the net profit is also seeing an uptick of almost 15% sequentially overall the company has also proposed a final dividend of almost 17 rupees per share so largely a good set of numbers the company has announced a dividend and on the back of that, expect the stock to open higher today. Well, Makshi, thanks very much uh, for that. Let's talk, focus on a few other stocks as well. Uh, Mahindra Life Spaces, Google Das Exports. Sonal is standing by with that list. Sonal, morning. Good morning, Prashant. Well, the other stock, apart from these two, is Landmark Cars because they've given their operational update for quarter four. The total revenues are up 8%. The after-sales service revenues are up 13.5%. The pre-owned vehicle sales, there the revenue has jumped sharply to come in at 41 crore rupees. And the company says they have a strong pipeline for organic and inorganic expansion. Moving on to Gokuldas Exports, uh, the QIP opens today. The floor price is at 789.900 rupees a share. They seek to raise 600 crore rupees via the QIP. And sources are indicating that the indicative issue price is 775, which is around 4.5% discount to the last closing price as well. And it could be around 12.2% of the pre-issue dilution that we'll see in equity share capital. Lastly, watching out for Mahindra Live Spaces, they have sold homes worth 350 crore rupees in two days at their Bengaluru project, which is Mahindra Zen. So that stock will be in focus as well. Not for that. So now let's wind this down then with Vivek, who's joining us with some more stocks in the news. Morning, Vivek. Well, good morning. You know, three stocks on my radar. First on the list is GMR Air Force. The company has closed uh, FI24 on a strong note in terms of both the uh, aircraft data, uh, operational updates coming in both uh, in terms of traffic for passenger as well as aircraft handle. Now, remember the company has domestic as well as international operations. Domestic, it's Hyderabad, Delhi as well as Goa. So what's actually happened in the month of March 2024? Total passenger traffic coming in at close to 1.06 crores, which is up 10% on a year-on-year -year basis and up 5% on a month-on-month -month basis. The total aircraft movement uh, has come in at close to 68,688, again up 6% on a year-on-year -year basis and up 8% on a month-on-month -month basis. For FY24 total, passenger traffic was up 20% and aircraft movement was up 12%. The next talk on the radar is Sharda Motor. Remember, the company had earlier intimated that they would be going ahead and looking at a buyback along expected lines. The board has gone ahead and approved the buyback. Now, only the shareholder not is pending. The buyback size is close to 185 crore, amounting to 3.46% of the total equity capital. The buyback price is at 1,800 rupees a share, and the buyback will be conducted via the tender route. And lastly, Vesuvius, remember a couple of news updates over there. Number one, the company has gone ahead and inaugurated a new flux plant in Vishakhapatnam. Flux is a component used in the casting process at steel plants. Along with that, some positive commentary coming in from the company in terms of the outlook that they see for their Indian operations. On the back of that, they've gone ahead and increased the capex outlay that the company had over the next few years from 500 crore to 1,000 crore. Thank you very much for that. And there is some news on uh, Indastars also where I think the company is, uh, you know, signed some contract and there is that QIP for Google Das Exports too. Let's do a quick recap then of the top stocks. Stocks with positive news flow are Bajaj Auto, Axis Bank, ICICI Security, Mahindra Life Spaces, Google Das Exports, Landmark Cars, GMR Airport, Sharda Motor and Vesuvius. While Infosys is the only stock on our radar with negative news flow. Now let's get a handle of all the action from the world of commodities. That's where all the action, the big moves are. Manisha joins in. Manisha. Well, thank you for that. Absolutely. After the reports of explosion in Iran, Iran is known to have activated air defense systems and has fired defense batteries. And all of this has led to uh, concerns on oil supply disruptions in the Middle East. In any case, the crude oil prices were supported as U.S. imposed sanctions on Iran and Venezuela. So now we are looking at the crude oil prices at uh, almost 4% on the higher side. And there's a lot of buying that we've seen in the natural gas prices also. There is a lot of safe haven buying that has come back in case of gold because of this. So we are back above $2,400 an ounce and very close to its all-time highs. 
Interestingly, the metal prices also have run up. You know, during these concerns, it always is seen that the tangible commodities always run up. In any case, the base metal prices were dealing with supply disruptions, improvement in demand, and the expectation is that with all this devastation taking place, that you will need infrastructure and construction demand also coming in for metals. Metals also are seeing improvement in demand from defense as a sector as well. So everywhere that you look in sense of industrial commodities, it seems like a very strong thing. All right, uh, Manisha, thanks very much uh, for that. So, I mean, uh, commodities once again really up there. And, you know, it's like a feedback loop, right? Commodities go up and they're an important part of uh, how inflation is calculated anywhere. And uh, that's the other leg, uh, which uh, that's the second order impact, which is that, inf uh, you know, rather than sort of trying to bring down inflation, it kind of puts in pressure on inflation on the other side. And then you get into the loop of uh, high of long and all of that. I mean, this is, of course, all financial markets, and this is all coming off on the back of the uh, sort of explosions out of Iran. Officially, we are kind of yet to hear anything uh, from either Israel or Iran. These are all uh, sort of news reports coming our way, headlines coming our way, uh, which we will continue to talk about. Siddharth so Kemke of Motoros for Financial Services is going to be with us on the other side uh, when we talk uh, specific stocks with him. Stay with us. Okay, there's also an interesting chat coming up as the first phase of the 2024 elections begin today. We get you an extensive coverage of the same when we return. Uh, lots of voices, lots of opinions, and of course, lots of on-the-ground reporting as well. Stay tuned.